Hi, I'm Emma Hain and I kick-started the adoption of open source GIS at SMEC. SMEC is a Snowy Mountain Engineering Corporation and it's an engineering consultancy firm. It was born from the expertise of those who planned and built the Snowy Hydro Scheme. We have built infrastructure from here and throughout um, and throughout um, Asia and Nepal and I've been there for about seven years now and um, I'm really excited that I was part of this team that did this. So here we go, here's our timeline. So 2011 I started at SMEC and it was a commercial GIS shop using um, Esri and MapInfo. Um, in 2012, the Queensland Government came in, we have an austerity phase, a lot of people lost their jobs, both in the public sector and the private sector in the engineering. Um, we lost our funding for our software and went from a team of five to just me, three days a week. Um, is, there a, sorry, can, is there a way I can fix this bit? Apologies. Um, so around that time um, at my son's school I found out about QGIS from another parent. Sorry. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, sorry, I'm just having trouble here. Where are going now? Yeah, all right. Okay. Two fingers. Two fingers. Cool. Sorry, I'm not Apple. All right. So, um, back to it. So, I tested it and I found it. I found QGIS to be so good for the engineering consultancy or for consultancy generally. It was really efficient. It was really stable. There were no gremlins who knew that you had. 15 minutes to get a map out. Um, the cartography was effortless and as somebody who grew up on National Geographic maps, it was fantastic to finally be able to draw a beautiful map. And the functionality and tools were, were brilliant as well. Um, so around that time, I um, came into contact with a QGIS core developer, Niall Dawson, and I started to format a strategy about where we would go here. Um, Eventually, in 2016, the strategy was accepted and Noel came on board part-time for us and that's when things started to kick off. Okay, so here we go. This is what we did. This is the strategy. We had a flexible GIS ecosystem, so that means that we had an open source habitat. And we used QGIS for, we were to use QGIS for most tasks and use other software as the clients required. Um, we provided democratic mapping throughout the company and we, um, and we also looked at our budget and our flow of funds. Sorry about this. Um, how do I get the next for the animation? Ooh, the arrow. The arrow? Oh, it's all right. It's supposed to be easily used, right? Oh, that one? There we go. I will get on top of this. <laughs> okay, so this is a really important, the flow of funds. We didn't want to put the money to a third developer, right? We want to do invest that money with us, you know. Um, and that meant that also cut out the third party relationship which our IT people loved. And we got more bang for our buck. So, we cut, used the money, we employed our QGIS core developer and we um, smackified our GIS. So what this means is that instead of um, just dealing with what our um, software companies wanted us to do, we got to do what we wanted to do. And we did this through plugins. We also did this through contributions to the development of the software. 
because there are other engineering companies out there and we want them to use GIS, please. Okay, finally, and I think one of the most important ones is to contribute to community. I grew up in a family which contributed to community. We volunteered, we did all that. It was the way that things were. So the way that we contribute to community is that we have now a massive test bed there. We've got a lot of people using that so they can fix the bugs. Um, we can test the beaters, we can provide feedback and we can incorporate new development into versions. Um, the other one and the side one is the social one as well. So we provide security to our core developer. He has that wage there and he only works part time for us so he can go off and he can go and develop what needs to happen outside of us. And we all grow and we all learn. All right, let's go through the implementation. Um, so we went through um, the installation um, from just the general web download, but we had a lot of issues there with versioning and people using different versions. Now we do it through an internal corporate software centre. Um, and we run automated updates from that in the background too. And um, we do that overnight and that goes to the plugin as well as the versions. Um, we have um, undertaken some work on the speed um, as well, so we only allow for the SMEC plugin to be updated when it loads up. You can go in and you can manually update your uh, other plugins as well. Um, and also we've, um, with our cache, we have set a greater cache limit to allow for um, the speed, for greater speed for any network um, traffic such as near map usage. Um, we also um, provide a splash screen for our updates as well. So this is a direct way to communicate with our users and we don't know, we, I mean we can run something and we can work out who's using it but who's got time for, our, for that, we just give it to them. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, we have what we call the SMEC plugin and um, this provides a whole lot of um, work that you'll see, what we've done from now on. So like others that you've seen, this provided um, direct access to data that we want people to use and everyone who uses QGIS have access to that data in PostGIS and also the XYZ tiles. Um, we have created the metadata catalogue and um, this uses a geo network open source um, for that and you can access this internally within the QGIS interface or you can access it externally and that will also take you as well links to um, the sources of those data and you can see when we've updated it as well. You can request for data to be updated there too. Um, internally we've created the catalogue search and uh, you'll see this later and um, this is one of our issues is that uh, we really want people to use the data that we want them to use. We don't want them downloading their own data because the stuff we do needs to have a certain level of currency. So this is a docking panel that is used um, within um, Q QGIS and so they can access um, one of those buttons there and it brings them in, they can go to the view, they can use, um, they can view the metadata on the Jira network or they can add it to project. In the future what we want to do there is we want them to add it to project, clip to the extent, have the symbology and chuck it in the project folder so that we can access that in three years time. Um, we also have an imagery and elevation one so we collect the imagery we've downloaded from NearMap and we put it in we, um, folders or some people put it in other folders. We run a bot that goes through that and then we chuck it all into a catalogue and we do that with our contour and elevation data as well. So essentially you navigate to a location click on that location and it will bring up what um, data is available and you can choose what's suitable for you. Um, symbology, so um, we are currently running through and as um, the GIS core we uh, will update default symbology if we really like it and so that runs with, um, on the post GIS. We've also created palettes for our branding so if we're doing a tender map you get to see our colours and you like our map so you're going to choose us. Um, we also have um, the templates as well in the layout manager 
um, and that can that's from all different sizes and an atlas as well. A lot of this is also based on variables, so you have one spot to fill it in, and then that all brings it into the map. Um, and then we've created discipline themes as well, so you can take those base mapping products, so for transport modelling, water, enviro, and um, you can take, we get the engineers, they can take that and they can build on it as well. And we also have developed default um, styles um, as our base maps because we're sort of working out whether or not we, cannot, we can or cannot use certain XYZ tiles. All right. Issues. So I've talked about some of these already. Um, and the SMEC plugin has helped a lot of those. But I'm just going to um, mention a couple of ones. We've had the great, great privilege of our IT department changing server names on us and don't telling us. <laughs> Rocking on Monday, nothing works. Everybody's ringing up going, I can't access it. So um, in the last two weeks, we've built a script there. So that's going to help with that. Um, because we want it to be seamless. We don't want to burn people. Um, one of the other aspects is HR and employing um, future GIS staff, and that includes employing down and employing up. We just ask people to be open-minded, go and have a look at QGIS first, see if that's something you would like to do. And we employ people who are really passionate about GIS, okay, because we've got a lot of change coming up with us with digital engineering. <coughs> and the most Sliding one is Slayer, but you're going to find out more about that tomorrow at Niall's uh, lightning talk, and that's taking all the Esri symbology and pushing it into QGIS. We have, big, we have a big water network project we're working on, and the engineers can't work out that that colour is that one, and that colour is that one, and it's a dot, it's a diamond. Or you get... <laughs> Talking about engineers... Um, they all reckon they're the pale rider, but that's us. Behaviour's a really big issue. It's fantastic GIS is out there now. The grads come in, they've had a term of GIS and they reckon they can do a map and they don't need us anymore. So what do we do? We can pull our you know, hair out and go, no, you can't do that, that's naughty, you know, but that's not gonna work, all right? People have diverse skills. Some of the best GIS people I've met are those people who are not GIS people. The questions they bring is fantastic. We develop a lot of things in conjunction with them. So, I'm part of the core GIS team, but we also have um, QGIS as a corporate mapper um, product, and that's the water, the enviros, the geologists, the modelers, the transport modelers. Um, some of the other ones are still not there yet, but still, we'll get them there. Um, so our general staff engineers cause detrimental impacts on our systems and outputs, which I liken to being cowboys. Their data management, well, that's their saddlebags, and they carry that with them in their C drive. <laughs> or recently on SharePoint. Um, that's a good story. Talk to Niall about that one. Um, but it is something that can be managed, but it's a give and take situation. Our approach is to accept that everyone is diverse in their skills, to allow them to undertake the basic mapping and to ensure their environment gives them a sense of freedom but reduces the risk for us. And this is about the processes. Let them do their analysis. You know, and it's back on them. It's not on us. They're the professionals. They know what they're doing. Get them to record their metadata as well, but just to be on top of the projects if they've got any GIS requirements, some big projects do. Um, product output, let them do their basic mapping, that's okay. Who wants to do basic mapping? We want to do the interesting stuff. Okay, so we have set it up so that it's appealing to them. It's quick and it's good looking. We ask that they push the end product to us to QA. And this helps them to guide us, uh, to guide them in their style, but ensures that what is put out there makes us look good. We may tweak the symbology and the labelling and other facets. And if it's an ongoing project where they're producing a lot of maps, we do have that. We'll go in and, and change a couple of things for them. And if we trust them, we'll tell them what we're doing so that they can do that as well. 
Um, and this is a great opportunity to market our superhuman abilities in labelling and symbology and other bits and pieces that they've got no idea. Um, you've seen the metadata catalogue with the data download. Um, again, generally in management, it's about the quick turnabout, turnaround for them. In the data management side as well, we've got to do it because we've got to ensure the data's currency, that the service space is not utilised by so many layers of, of cadaster, and also to reduce the web traffic and the downloads. These are the issues in the queue. Digital engineering, we're currently trying to move into a digital engineering group where GIS sits there with the CAD and others. Um, we are also looking at pushing our data out globally because we're now part of Sabana Jurong. We have a lot of companies from China through the Middle East to America, Africa, South America. Um, and also to tie up that project information management. And so in the end, we can just wrap up that project, put it somewhere, Three years later, we can come back and revisit that project. Any questions? That's it. We do have time for a couple of questions. Anybody have a question for Emma? Yes, thank All you. All right. You mentioned, uh, you touched upon some challenges around HR. Um, I think you said you need to convince your new recruits to not just say I'm not touching it because it's not easy. Is that what you're yep, yeah, essentially like we and that also happens with some of our grads who come in as well. Oh, but I want ArcGIS. Oh, no, I only use Esri. And it's just like, well, you know, if you're prepared to look outside of that, we'll consider you. Um, it has to be part of the job that you will be open to open source. So it becomes a recruitment criteria. Yeah. Another question, anybody? Thanks, Emma. Um, so, what drove was the fact that you run out of money and you had to transition something else? So how would you, how would you have driven a change to future if, if that hadn't been over? Yep. So yeah, 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 yeah. If that wasn't a motivator and I'd found out about QGIS and gone and tried it, I probably would have gone that way anyway because I love it. Like, it was just such a much better pro a product for our needs. It was so much more quicker and um, that's probably what I would have done and I would have done the strategy and it would have been also bringing the money back into us and customising us because we have needs and the software companies don't necessarily know what those needs are. 